So attitude and M3, mind, move, manifest. What's attitude all about, you know? And I, I always lead off with this question with this is like, what do you, what do we know about attitude? And really the answer is, is not much other than when somebody says, hey, you got a good attitude? And everybody goes, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I get a good attitude, you know, for the most part. It's, it's rare that you'll see a person say, no, I, I got a bad attitude. You know, everybody says I've got a good attitude, but then you ask them, you know, well, what does that mean? What is attitude? Oh, it means, uh, uh, you know, like I'm happy. I don't maybe uh, uh, get in fights with people. I don't cause trouble. Is it? None of that stuff is what attitude really is. Attitude is the composite of your thoughts and your feelings and your actions. And that's it. So if you're wanting to do something and you're not taking action toward doing that, then it can come back to your attitude and you can ask yourself, why am I not taking action toward that thing? Because you're going to notice as you back up from the non-action or what we do a lot of times is do something else that, you know, we like to do. Uh, you can see that you're having feelings that aren't associated with what you want. You have feelings that are negative toward that thing and you're allowing those thoughts to be created or handed to you by other people, person, place, or thing. So somewhere in that composite of what attitude is, thoughts, feelings, and actions, it got broke down and you can say that your attitude is negative. And that's all right, man. And remember this stuff, it, it, M3 is not about judgment. It's about being aware of what the heck that that really means. And we're gonna be aware tonight that there's actually two types of attitude. There's attitude based on circumstances and there's attitude based on understanding. Most of the world is walking around with attitude based on circumstances. And a circumstantial attitude is things are going good, you feel good, you take positive action, you're moving toward what you want. Things go wrong, you feel bad, you don't take any more action and you flip that vibration. You start pushing your goal away or you start taking act, action in a way that brings you the things that you don't want. So the world is actually determining what your attitude is. Somebody comes in and says something to you that you don't like and you do take on that negative feeling and it causes you to not do things that are moving you toward the things that you want in this world. You're not in control with a circumstantial attitude. Attitude based on attitude is attitude all the time, a positive attitude, as often as possible because you know that nobody can cause you to think something that you don't want. We give that power away. Yeah, I get it but it doesn't mean that they actually have control over you. You can think of something else. And when we have attitude based on understanding, we can create that positive thinking again that creates those positive feelings. And then it's natural for you to continue to take the positive action in your life. And that's what attitude is. So no more of that stuff of, hey, you know, you got a good attitude. Yeah, you know, but I don't understand what it is. I just explained it. Attitude is the composite of not just, you know, how you're interacting with the world and being nice to people. It's the composite of your thoughts, your feelings, and the actions that you're taking toward doing what you want to do. Boom. One of those is missing and the attitude broke down. What in the heck did I do with this? This is so funny. Oh, this is from last week, man. Henry Ford. It's all about attitude. Whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, I mean, that's attitude. You're right. Either way, it doesn't matter. You're the one making the rules. Another guy said something that was even more powerful in my eyes. It's, it, it, that's why we call it the magic word. When you understand what it is, is that nothing could stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. Why is that? Because they're not going to stop moving forward. And you know, if you keep moving forward towards something that you want, like Edison, 10,000 times it took him of uh, failing to create this light that's above my head, but he kept moving forward. And it's a fact that if you keep moving forward and the key is you keep holding the feeling of having what you want, you're going to get what you want. So nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal and nothing on earth can help the man with the wrong mental attitude. There's the flip side of it, the yin and the yang. You can hand everybody every key to succeeding in the world. And they can approach it with a negative mental attitude, and they're going to find those reasons too. They're going to find all the reasons why it doesn't work. They're going to find all the reasons why they can't do it. And that will become a fact in their life. So back to the stick man. 
That's what it all comes down to. The stick man represents our mind. We have no cells of recognition for our mind. We don't know what it is because mind is not our brain. Mind is an activity. Like we said, if you think that your mind is your brain, well, when you tell yourself, you know, I'm having a memory or I'm going to think about something. Well, what part of your brain told your part of the brain to think about that? And then if you follow it backward, little what step forward, what part of your brain told that part of your brain told it? We're never going to be able to see the mind, but we need some kind of picture to work with because we don't know what does it look like when our mind is working the way we want it to or the way we don't want it to. If we want to make a change in our life, like paint our car or change our body, we have a mental image of what it, where we are now and where we want to be. And that's a goal to be shooting for. Well, that's what this picture, the stick man does with our mind. The top part represents, you know, like uh, our mind broken into two pieces, the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and then the body. Now, the way that it works is the energy always flows from the top down. It comes through our conscious mind. That's where you and I live. We can accept or reject things in our conscious mind. We can build images. The limitations we would call it in the conscious mind is, is that we can only hold one thought at a time. And we've done this before. You know, we want to see our real multitasking capability is think about something that you love and something that you hate at the same time. I mean, think about them at the same time and you can't do it in a physical way to do this unless you've practiced it, draw a circle and draw a square at the same time. And you just can't do it. Our conscious mind doesn't do that, but that's not just a, it's not a limitation. That's a gift. That's part of attitude. Because we get to choose. Are we going to think about what we want? Are we going to think about what we don't want? Are we going to think about what's going wrong or what's going right? And as you think about that, the energy flows down into our subconscious mind. That's where our programming lives. That's where, we're, where our beliefs live. That's who we, we really feel we are. It's the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is a multitasker like you could never imagine. It's also the part of you that runs your blood pressure, heart rate, and hormones and everything else. And it's also taking in your whole world around you. And then it's offering up to you what it is that you see and perceive the world to be. What you're in harmony with, with your beliefs at the subconscious. It's the powerhouse, but we don't live there. Our programming lives there. And the programming is accepted based on feeling. That's what the subconscious communicates in. How do you feel? Feeling is just a word that we invented to describe the vibration that we're in. And you can call it a positive or negative vibration. If you're going towards something you want, you feel positive. If you're going towards something you don't want, it's negative. But that's all at the subconscious. And the body, which seems so important to us, and the outside world, you could call it that too, it's really just an instrument of the mind. It does exactly what the mind tells it to, and it's in the vibration that the mind tells it to be in. So that's it. The body is actually just a, a byproduct of what's going on in our mind. And we always need to think of it this way. So why is this important with attitude? Why does this tie in with attitude? Because the energy flows from the top down. You see it. If you're feeling and you notice that you're not feeling good, that came from somewhere up in that conscious mind. Somehow at the floodgates up there, we allowed something in. Positive thoughts. Create positive feelings at the subconscious, which create positive actions. That's it. That's the only way that it works. Negative thoughts, negative feelings, negative action. And we've all been in that downward spiral before where like the worst just seems to get worse and it just can't seem to get better. We got no physical energy. Bad things are happening out there in the world and we're thinking about them all the time and we're feeling them all the time and our physical body reflects it. But this is the key to understanding how to change that. You have to break that cycle. And sometimes it feels awkward as heck because like momentum, you know, gets built up. We have to break the cycle and figure out how to create the positive. And I've got some ways for you later. Uh, they're very simple ways. They're right in front of us. But a lot of times we just won't take the time. We'll just sit there and say, I'm going to be in a negative state. And by the way, that's part of programming at the subconscious. We have programming in our subconscious that tells us this is the state that you're in. This is the state that is you. So if a person lives in a negative state most of the time, it doesn't mean they have to like it, but that's their normal natural state. So they start getting too happy or good things start happening for them. 
uh, it, 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 they'll automatically start figuring out ways to shoot that down to stop that stuff. So that's why we start to talk to ourselves from a point of view that says, I love, I, I, I love all the great things that happen for me. My life is positive all the time. That might not be what's happening for you at that moment, but that's producing that feeling, that's producing that programming at that subconscious that starts to realize that, wait a minute, this is who you are. And this is how you start to go out and look for that and make that happen in your life. So whether it's positive or negative, that's the big key here. We think about magnets. A lot of the things that I talk about in coaching is it's like invisible forces. You know, we talk about uh, law of attraction. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. You don't have to. You know what I mean? The key about believing it or not is, is that if you don't believe it, you're never going to focus your thoughts on any given thing. So your thoughts are going to be random out there in the world and you get random results and then it proves what you believe, which is this stuff doesn't work. But it is happening all the time. And the way that I like to explain it to people is, is that you can't see what happens between magnets. But you turn this side of the magnet and that magnet can look exactly like the other side of the magnet. You turn it this way and it pushes it away. It pushes the other magnet away. You flip it around and they automatically smack together. There's an invisible force there that you accept. Well, there's an invisible force going on in the world around you all the time. And it's based on a vibration that you're putting out, that you're in. You've walked into a room before and you knew that something was wrong. You didn't have to hear anything said and you didn't have to, to, to see anybody even move or whatever, but you just felt it. That's that key. That's what we have inside of us. That's attitude. That's vibration. And when you're in a positive attitude, you attract whatever vibration you're in harmony with. That's why it spirals down. That's why it spirals up. That's why it gets better when things are going good. You just can't believe it. It just keeps getting better and better and better. And that's why when it's going bad, it can have that tendency to get worse and worse and worse, especially when we don't understand attitude and that it's, uh, it's, a, it's not based on circumstances. It's something that we can create inside of us. If we don't understand that, the circumstances, like I said, it can just get worse and worse and worse because that's what you're in harmony with. You got to break it. So I said this. Attitude, it's like puzzle pieces. It can be put this way too, as in a recipe. You know, somebody tries a, like a cake. You have a cake, you don't say, well, that's good spice or that's good flour. You just say that that's good cake. And that's part of what we do with attitude. So it's a good attitude, it has a good attitude. But the breakdown of it, it's the compilation of the thoughts, the feelings and the attitude and the whole thing, excuse me, the thoughts, the feelings and the actions, the actions that you're taking, and the whole thing comes together to form your attitude. Your attitude, this is it, plain and simple. Your attitude is going to determine where you go in life. I know we've heard this at the coaching level, like basketball coach, soccer coach, and people like this, but this is a whole nother presentation of this. This isn't just something that somebody's saying. This is a fact. Your attitude is going to determine it. I heard it said one time that uh, that it, it was W. Clement Stone. At one time, he was one of the, the, the most wealthy guy in America. He was an insurance guy. And his attitude was, a, a book was written about this, and it was called That's, That's Great. And that before he could ever respond to anything, his natural response to it was to say, that's great. It didn't matter what had happened or what had come his way. He'd say, that's great. And then he would figure out the good part of whatever was happening to him later. But he would open up the space for it to exist. And he was the wealthiest in the 1970s. He was at one time the wealthiest man in America, just based on knowing that that's great all the time. That's how he approached his life. And of course, he got a lot, a lot from that. Admit, did Mary Lee drop off? So your attitude is going to determine where you go in life. It's the foundation of either failure or success. Your attitude, it's the composite of your thoughts, your feelings and your actions. Your thoughts, feelings, and actions are an energy that you're sending out, out into the world, out into the universe, however you want to call it, to the person next to you. And whatever you send out is what you're going to get coming back to you. Everything has good in it. You know, some of the worst lessons we learned in life when we're going through it, 
It's not fun. It's not fun at all. But we can always go back, especially as years pass and go, man, I can see the significance of why that happened. You can see the person that was created. You can see the part of you that was created, maybe strengthened and hardened during that time. So there's good and what we would call bad in everything. And the question is, is what are we looking for? Because whatever you're looking for, you're going to find. What do you look for? That is going to dictate your attitude. Attitude in relation to us is more than just words. When we affirm what we want to ourselves, what we feel, the opposite. It doesn't matter. You can't walk around all day and if you don't feel it and you can be saying, you know, life is great, life is great, life is great. But you've got this feeling that life is horrible and you're fearful. You're waiting for the worst thing in the world to happen. Uh, it's not going to work. It doesn't work like that. We have to develop a picture, a mental image of why it's great, why it feels good for us. And get into that vibration. Get into a setting of your mind where you're winning and what it feels like to win and the things that you get when things are going the way that you want. Stepping ahead of myself there. But when we affirm what we want to ourselves, but we feel the opposite, it's like someone, it's like telling someone, if you've experienced this before, good job when you feel as though they've not done a good job. It's like, you know, you know what that feels like and you know what it feels like to be on the receiving end of that. You know, somebody's kind of faking their way through it, trying to say it, and it just doesn't feel right. What you've got is you've got a double binding message. You've got words going this way and you've got this feeling that's pulling the other way. It attracts in one direction and it pushes away at the same time. We've got a word for that in the coaching space. We call it struggle, you know. But we've got to be able to affirm what we want to ourselves and feel as though the good that we want, that we desire, is already here. And we're attracting everything necessary for the success. Like I said, that might be foreign to you, but trust me, try it. Get into that vibration and do that. It might be something that feels like, oh, that's not happening. And so, like, how could I say this stuff? Trust me. Get into that vibration and feel it. And your world changes. Your day changes. Your moment changes. Your attitude changes. And the longer you can figure out how to maintain that positive attitude, the faster you succeed. So this week, what are we going to do for action steps? We just want to take notice. Is our attitude based on circumstances or is it based on understanding? You find yourself feeling bad, you know, ask yourself, what's causing that? I'll bet you it's a circumstance. Is my attitude based on circumstance? my attitude based on understanding begin to create your attitude based on understanding the first thing when you notice you're feeling negative ask yourself what is causing this feeling trace it all the way back if you look if you drill you it's like being in the closet with a heavyweight boxer and you're not paying attention that he's there and he's beating you up you're getting knocked down and you can't stay on your feet, but you won't affirm that maybe something's going on here. I'm getting knocked down. I'm getting knocked down. And somebody says, well, you keep stepping up next to that heavyweight boxer and he's knocking the heck out of you. No, no, I'm not. That's the whole point of this is that standing and looking at it. And once you notice it, you say, wait a minute, he's standing right there. This feeling is standing right there for me. I'm noticing it. So now that I can change it. Stop what you're doing and take a look and say, what's causing this? What's causing this feeling? What thoughts am I having? What just happened to cause this for me? The second thing is consciously shift to the positive. If that thing's negative, it's not serving you. Let it go. Just get away from it. Let it go. It's not helping you to get what you want and it's not helping you to feel happy. Remember, you can only attract what you're in harmony with so that the longer you're in that negative state and feeling that negative state, the only thing you're bringing to you are things that are like that. So consciously shift. How do we do that? This is what I talked about in the beginning of this. What are some simple ways to do that? Well, this is going to blow your mind just how simple this is. You ever been driving down the road and a song comes on? A song is just vibration. It's vibrating the airways. It vibrates the little bones in your ears and it sends a vibration. You feel it. 
that changes your mind just like that. A song can do that. Music can do that. Stop what you're doing if you're feeling bad. And if you have time, listen to something that you love. And it doesn't have to be music too. Some people like to listen. I like to listen to my Audible books. I like Think and Grow Rich. I love that book. You know, I love to listen to that one. I love Neville Goddard, you know, just put it on and it puts me back in that space. Here's another one. Give somebody else love. Once you send an energy out, here's the other thing. You take on a like energy. Yes, randomly is okay. You're thinking of somebody, you think of somebody who's been having a hard time in your life. Stop, take pause and send them a text. Tell them that they're great because they are great. God made them and they didn't mess up when they made them. We're all great in one way or another and we all need to hear it. Send the love out to somebody. Gratitude. Take time and write down things that you are seriously thankful for. It could be as simple as your health, the roof over your head. It could be your family. It could be your loved ones. It could be whatever it means to you. I'm very, very thankful for. I'm thankful for M3, Mastermind. I'm thankful to get to do this and hang out with you guys all the time. I love this stuff. I was just telling Jennifer that. This was just an idea that popped in my head. And I love to sit here and just share this information. So I'm thankful for it. Raises my vibration. Goal script. Well, what the heck is that? If you don't have one, I recommend that you get one. It's the story of you. How are you succeeding? And it's not about talking about what's going on right now. It's about talking about in the now what you want to happen in your life and talking to yourself from that point of view. You can set that to beautiful music and put it on a recording and actually plug it into your ears. Go for a walk with the dog for 20 minutes or by yourself. It doesn't have to be. I say the dog because I take my dog for a walk. But listen to the story of you and feel what it feels like to have that right now. You talking to you about how great it is to have the life that you want. That's a goal script. And that's a very powerful subconscious reprogrammer listening to that stuff and feeling what that feels like. Like, uh, these are some really quick ways to, to make a positive attitude shift. And that is it, guys. That is attitude in a nutshell. Next week, MVP, the most valuable person, is the key to being a great leader. True leadership is about helping others develop themselves and their skills. People don't follow people because they have to. And if they do, they don't do it for long and they don't do it with much enthusiasm. They follow people because they want to. Real leadership isn't about directing people. It's about drawing out their strengths and developing those people and their skills and helping them. And when you understand how to align the success of other people with your success, that's when you become a true leader, a great leader. And that's how you become unstoppable guys this is m3 mastermind and i had said that we were becoming a group um and we are coming a group and jason actually asked us tonight he said you know is this a paid group well we are a paid group starting now this is what creates us in our culture and who we are but we're just it's a very small coaching thing that we do for a small fee so we can gather together. It's free for your thirst, first month, uh, January. You take your 30 days, hop on here and see if it's something that you like. After that, it's only $9.97 a month for us to gather like this. And if you feel like you're getting benefit from it, I'm gonna put the link into the chat, grab it, go to the page, sign up, take your first 30 days. And then if you're really loving it, keep going. And if not, didn't cost you anything to do it, right? I'm gonna unmute, or actually, let's see how this works. I can unmute you guys. And questions, takeaways, anything of that nature, you guys just chime in. Does it work? Am I unmuting you? Unmuted. Unmuted, brother. Go ahead, Eric. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> That's so funny, man. E squared. I think I think Eric uh, Eric M is driving. Any questions about? Does that? Did, has anybody ever heard attitude? It's 
that it's was- funny you brought up attitude today because my attitude this morning was piss poor. Nice. <laughs> I, you know, because I got up at 4:45 to go to the gym, and I'm driving, and you know, I have this huge goal that I've shared with you, and I'm, and I'm hearing all these reasons why I'm gonna fail in my head, and I'm like, shut up. <laughs> As I'm driving, I'm like, shut up. I'm getting to the gym. No, I'm going to the gym. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to work out, and the, my workout's going to be killer. Yeah. And I had to totally just think about my workout. Yeah. I let it go. That's funny you brought that up. I was like, man, that's exactly what happened to me today. And then my day got better, and then I had that phone call. And- exactly. Now you see that, and if you hadn't flipped your vibration, I can guarantee you that that wouldn't have happened for you. Or even I wouldn't have if thought the phone about call it. happened, you would have been like, "What do you want?" Or you would have rejected it in some way, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't even have thought about, "Hey, you know what? I can call someone else and have them help me get what I want." I didn't. Th- I would. I wouldn't have thought about it. I just said, "Oh well, I can't help her because." I haven't paid my realtor dues and I don't have this. I don't have that. So, oh, well, that's how I would have, that's, that's, that was, that's like been me for the last 10 years. That would have been, that's how it would have went. You see the composite right there in it? You would have taken the action, right? Right. So there's the whole picture of it and you can trace it all the way back. You say, well, I don't have, I can't, I can't, I'm not. Yep. Uh, I am, you know, I am that. And I, that's all there is to it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> That's right. You're doing it. I posted it in the chat, guys. There's the link there. And like I said, anybody want to chime in? I don't I don't know if I'm unmuting or muting you the right way. If uh, you need to raise your hand or anything like that, I'll, I'll ask to unmute one more time. It, it asks you a question if you want to stay muted or unmute yourself. That's what I got. Got it. Got yeah, it. Me too. I, hey, Jason. <laughs> You ever heard attitude so, that way, yeah. man? Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny because I feel like I chimed. I mean, I feel like I'm chiming in at the perfect time because I've been struggling with some, you know, some of this exact stuff that we're talking about. And I think my biggest thing that I've been accused of, and and because somebody else pointed it out, I started to notice a pattern. But you were right on the money when you said you know, people that are used to having, uh, you know, some kind of aggression or, or some kind of drama in their life. That's what makes them, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, drama is a burden or that, but like myself, that's where I feel the most normal. You know what I mean? That I'm the one that creates that kind of stuff because that's my, that's my comfort, you know? So, I mean, it's definitely something that I want to, work on but you know i just feel like it's a part of who i am at this point but it's it's like you said you know it's not something that i want to continue to do yeah you know <clears throat> it is I, I agree with you brother it, it, it whatever's showing up in our life is a part of who we are but the key is is that like you said you're coming on at the right time and then you start to realize like shoot i can change this the thing is, is that the way that we change it, we weren't taught that in school. We were taught to read, remember, and repeat, pass the test, move on. And really the way that we program ourselves, like the way that you learned your name to be Jason, the way that you learned to walk and the way that you learned to feed yourself, you know, you did that through constant space repetition. We didn't pop out into the world and say, hey, how you doing? My name's Jason. I mean, yeah. it took a lot of messing up before you started to get that right. And then the names of the people around you and then. So it's that real programming that comes in to who and what ultimately comes out is that when somebody says, hey, how you doing? What's your name? You never even think about it. It's an automatic response. You don't have to think if your name is uh, Jed or Steve or, or Mike yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to go through a list of stuff. It just happens. Well, the key is, is that our life happens that way, too. But we don't look at it that way. And through a constant spaced repetition and learning through some of the stuff that we teach here at M3 Mastermind, you know, and some of the stuff that I teach in coaching, we learn that we have the ability to change that. It can be our natural state to say, man, things are always working out for me. My life just keeps getting better and better. Seems like good stuff lands in my lap all the time. Sounds far-fetched, right? Walk around and feel that and feel that over and over and over again. 
and you'll come up with ideas of why that that's true for you. And you know people that actually experience that too. You say, why, why do they always seem like that? They, uh, you know, that their, their world is just going so well, you know, like why do they just keep seeming to succeed? fall into a bucket of crap like you, you call it some people say and come out smelling like a rose is what we used to refer to it as is that some people just have these these ways well it, it's a belief about yourself we don't have what we have in our life based on what we want that's just plain and simple it's the best way that i know how to put it for people we have what we have in our life based on what we believe and the belief is at the subconscious it's controlling what we're doing thinking feeling and how we operate 96 to 98 percent of our day only two to four percent of what we're actually doing is something that we're wanting and choosing to do sounds far-fetched but watch watch your your movements throughout the day and you'll see that most of the things that we do are out of habit we're habit forming machines we can form the habit of all the success we want to man m3 first m3 for 2021 did you guys like that text 2020, 2020 left a little stink. Yeah, yeah that's Close for sure. Away with the massive success in 2021. Right here, guys, at M3. I appreciate you hopping on. Uh, you guys get in touch with me anytime, too. I, I'm, I'm here. I'm always here to help. So have a great evening. Thank you, man. Thank you. I'll see you right, next man. week. All right, brother. See ya. Take care, guys. See ya.